Good morning, just got to the barn. Let's go feed Ernie. a day. See that? What I usually do is I prep the oats. So I turn on the auger, get the oats ready in the bin because I actually feed all the horses here at the barn, not just Ernie. And then I come back and I prep his hay pellets and I try to keep Ernie on um, a lower protein diet. He um, has arthritis, so he does much better on Timothy pellets than, say, like um, alfalfa pellets. So I just use the Dumore brand Timothy pellets, and I grab a scoop of that. So about that much, if I had to guess, um, if you were using like a standard like kitchen cup measurer, I would maybe call that two cups of like dry matter roughly okay let me grab the feed bin walk it over into the restroom and it's very important to always soak your hay pellets so i use warm water because this is the winter and it's a little chilly an inch to three quarters of an inch of water in there um, enough to kind of make the little pellets sort of float around you want to make sure you use enough water that all of the pellets have water to soak up so you don't have anything dry and crunchy in there okay so we're back over here in my tack locker to that timothy pellet mixture i add um, organic flax oil so it's really important during the winter that we try our best to replace what grass has and hay does not have. So hay is very low in fat. So I use flaxseed oil to help replace that. So my horse has flat fat <laughs> and also it's getting enough omega-3. So especially in horses that have arthritis, um, supplementing with omega-3s is gonna be really beneficial to them because it helps with um, their natural inflammatory response. All right, as we can see, the hay pellets that we soaked have absorbed most of the water. Um, if I grab it, I can smush it completely between my fingers. There's no hard knobbies anymore. Um, again, just to reiterate, this is so important because if you don't soak these pellets, when your horse eats them, the saliva in their throat can cause the pellets to expand and possibly cause your horse to choke. So you wanna make sure that they're already expanded, they've already absorbed water before you feed them. All right, so let's carry this over. Oh, looks a little blurry here. There we go, okay. Carry this over and then I'm gonna show you guys the supplements that I feed him. <clears throat> I choose um, a lot of powdered supplements just because I found I can get the best quality that way. So I buy individual ingredients and then mix everything in the hay pellets as opposed to buying like a name brand um, pre-mixed like joint supplement things like that um, i've done a lot of research on the best joint supplements the best forms of vitamins and minerals and this is what i believe to be the absolute top-notch diet all right so first thing i start with is this is a half an ounce scoop and I fill this halfway with magnesium oxide. I buy this bulk from my local feed store. Okay, so we sprinkle that in. A lot of people feed magnesium for its calming effects. That's all well and good, but let's not forget that that's a macro mineral and it's essential to muscle and nerve function. So that should be really your main goal in feeding magnesium. Um, next thing I'm going to add, Animed MSM. Love MSM. So, so good for joint stiffness in arthritic horses. So he gets um, a half an ounce scoop in the morning 
And then in the evening, I give him an additional quarter ounce scoop. So you can see this little cup over here. I've already started to prepare his evening supplements. So a quarter an ounce in there, and he also gets um, the other half scoop of magnesium. So that's also in there right now. All right, next thing, San Juan Ranch Glucosamine Sulfate Powder. The sulfate version of glucosamine is the most highly absorbable form, and that's why I've chosen it. I get it in bulk. This is a uh, 200 plus day supply, really cheap, great brand. Love this company. Um, they have a lot of single ingredient supplements, as does Animed. You can find um, just single ingredients in a lot of these things. So you can then adjust the amount that you're feeding to your horse and making sure that they're getting the therapeutic dose. So um, it's a really small scoop. This is a, hang on one second, let me try to read this. Uh, what's it say? You know what, I'm going to say that's a quarter of an ounce scoop because it looks pretty similar to the other side of that red one. All right, so he gets one scoop in the morning and then one scoop again for his evening supplements. And one scoop, try to zoom in on this here. Can we see it? Can we see it? There you go. Okay. Um, so for every two scoops, he's getting 8,500 milligrams of glucosamine. That amount is hard to find in a joint supplement. I mean, you'll be lucky if you find 5,000. Um, I have found a few, but cost-wise, it's cheaper just to feed the single ingredient. So that's why I do it. Okay, moving on. In this tub, I have California Trace Minerals. If you're not familiar with this brand, you should be, because they're the best. So this is all of his trace minerals. Uh, throw that in there. He gets two ounces a day, one ounce in the morning, one ounce at night. Um, briefly, we can discuss what are trace minerals. So that's your um, zinc, your copper, your manganese. Um, let's see, what else is in there? Vitamin E. Uh, you know, I'm drawing a blank. I'll link it below though. All the good stuff. All the things that they need to grow a healthy coat and a, grow, a uh, healthy hoof. All right, moving on. Hyaluronic acid. Um, again, sticking with my theory of just buying single ingredient things, I found if I just buy human grade hyaluronic acid capsules, I can feed a much higher dose at a much cheaper cost. So if you can see that right there, one capsule contains 100 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. So um, HA, basically what that does is it helps to plump up the synovial fluid inside your horse's joints. So uh, I'm gonna dump one of these capsules in here. Give me one second, cause it's really hard to do this while I'm holding a phone. <laughs> Next we have vitamin E. Um, the California Trace Minerals does have uh, 700 IU of vitamin E. However, during the winter, because hay has so little vitamin A, I like to over supplement just a little bit. So I add another 400 IU to his feed daily. Just one little soft gel, just to something a little extra. All right, I'm trying to do this one handed again. Okay, well, a few came out, but this is what they look like. Just little soft gels. You don't need to open these, just plop it right in. They will chew it up. It dissolves in their stomach, just like it would in ours. Pretty easy. And um, I don't feed this every day, but hay is also lacking in vitamin A. Um, it's all those, you know, fat soluble vitamins, so vitamin E, vitamin A. Um, I found this from the Now brand, natural beta carotene. So this is a natural form of vitamin A, which I think is super important as opposed to um, the synthetic version. So one of these capsules contains 25,000 IU of vitamin A. And I will give him one of these like once or twice a week, not every day. Um, I want to briefly discuss what joint supplements are actually for, because a lot of people get confused on this. They think that, you know, they go to tractor supply, they buy just a generic joint supplement, and their horse is going to feel better in a month. And when they don't, they give it up, they throw the stuff away, and they say, well, you know, that didn't work for my horse. It's not necessarily the case. What we need to remember is can you see me okay <laughs> joint supplements are for prevention and also maintenance so it's maintaining the joint integrity maintaining the cartilage 
the synovial fluid in your horse's joints. It's not for pain management. And a lot of people confuse that. If you need pain management, you get a pain pill. So you put them on Butte or Prevacox, Equiox, something like that. Um, that's something you have to discuss with your vet. That's your pain management. Also, turmeric, devil's claw, yucca, things like that. Pain management. Joint supplements, joint support supplements are entirely different. So they're not going to take away pain, but they are going to help the structure of the joint to maintain it, to keep its health longer. So your horse is moving more um, fluidly, they're moving um, with more ease, and they're not as stiff. So it's very important, I think, to differentiate those two things. All right, so you can see my little mess down here. Let's mix that up, and we'll go feed it to him. All right, let's talk about hay. The absolute most important thing you can feed your horse is good quality hay. Um, I feed a mixed grass from a farmer who does not use any pesticides. I think that's really important. Hello, Ernie. And I feed as much as Ernie can possibly eat. That is also very important. Horses are grazing animals. They have small stomachs, large intestines. They are not meant to eat large meals twice a day. They are meant to graze, snack at will, throughout the day. All right, so we're gonna load up his hay net. Hi, bud. So this is what I like to see when I come in the morning to the barn, that there's still some hay left over in his net. That way I know he definitely spent no time last night hungry. Um, just so you guys know, this is the Freedom Feeder uh, two-day net, this net kind of expensive. It's about $100, but it holds a lot of hay. One inch hole nets, no knots. So the material is really soft on his mouth. I've had no issues with like abnormal teeth wear, gum soreness, nothing like that. I highly recommend this net. Again, that's the Freedom Feeder two day net, one inch holes. Um, I've already put a few flakes in there. So I got one more to throw in. You can watch me struggle. <laughs> Okay, inserted. This particular net works like an envelope. So um, the front section of netting is a little bit longer than the back, and there's three clips attached to like the top edge. So I take the net, roll it up and over the hay, and clip it to the back section so he can't get in through the top. I just want to quickly mention um, the barn owner also feeds hay for him on the ground in his stall. So he gets two flakes in the morning, two flakes in the evening. And when they're outside, um, she also puts hay out in the pasture for them. And this is all during the winter, so hay out in the pasture as well. Um, the turnout schedule that he's on right now is they go out during the day and they're in during the night. So um, this hay net really doesn't get touched until um, the evening. He's munching on it now, but they're going to be turned out in about a half an hour or so, so they'll have hay outside. Just wanted to clarify that. Guys, I'm sorry if this video is slightly confusing because as I'm trying to film it, I'm like running around trying to do my barn chores and feed the other horses too. So to recap, Ernie is fed unlimited grass hay 24 seven, whether he's outside in the pasture or in his stall. He is fed um, a small, like a half a scoop of whole oats twice a day. He's fed that scoop of Timothy pellets mixed with his minerals twice a day. And finally, and to the Timothy pellets, I add all the supplements like we discussed. And finally, the last thing I feed him, he gets two grams of salt, loose salt every day. So I know it may have been a little like here, there and everywhere when I'm feeding him, but I just wanted to do that quick recap. Okay, see you later. Look at Ernie living his best life here. Oh, yeah.